I got a new cap. You like it? Welcome back to another Bitcoin Day Trader. Welcome back to the Bitcoin Day Trader channel. And today we're gonna work on Hashcat. I've been receiving a couple of questions about Hashcat. I have not any experience with Hashcat yet. So I thought this would be a great opportunity to try Hashcat. Okay, so let's do this all together. First, we gotta find ourselves the program Hashcat. So let's just search for Hashcat. www.hashcat.net so now we're here at the Hashcat homepage. This is where you can download Hashcat. As you all can see, Hashcat requires some things on your computer. So you need to have blah, 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 not that important. What we care about is using our GPU. So that's the NVIDIA GPU's requirement. And we need a driver of 367 or later. And how do we check that? I'm not quite sure, but I think I have to go here to this control center, help, system information. As you guys can see in the screen here, I have a driver version of 391. As we saw here, we need 367. We have the updated version, 391, so that's later. So that means that we can use this hashcat. Let's start with downloading the binaries. Where's desktop? Here's desktop. Save it. It is a .7z file. That means that you cannot open it with an ordinary zip program like WinRAR or WinZip or whatever. What we need is a 7z. You gotta download 7zip. It's very easy, Google 7z, 7zip, download and install the exe file for your PC. And depending on your system, you need a 32-bit or a 64-bit, but yeah, that's, that's either one of these two. So install that stuff, let's go back to our desktop. Let's close this, because we know that our driver is the right one, and we have our .7z here. So once you have installed 7-zip, you get this right button, you know, your right mouse button, 7-zip, and extract it to Hashcat. So that takes not that long. So now we can move this to our C drive. So like I always do, put it here, C drive, and let's just copy this folder. Hold control to copy, and we have copied it to our C drive. So as you can see here, we have Hashcat here. So let's start by opening Hashcat. And the way we're gonna open it is using our command prompt. So go to start, type CMD, open the command prompt window. Let's put it here. Let's go to the directory of Hashcat. So first we need to go to our C directory. So change directory, CD, space, C double dot slash. And now we are on our C drive. Let's search for that folder. So first start by checking out our directory. That's what dear means. So it shows us everything in our directory. And as you can see here in the screen, we have hashcat 4.1.0. So that's this folder here. We have it there. And the reason why it's down here was because we just copied it. So probably if we press this, now, now it is the same list. You see, bit cover master at the top, code blocks, my coins, the git, the hashcat. Okay, so now we've got to go to our hashcat folder. So that's CD, change directory and type hash and if you press tab that's what tab does it auto fills it it says hashcat 4.1.0 press enter now we're in this folder press directory and we can see everything that's in the directory and that will be exactly the same as we would see here you see here examples dictionary example zero command as you can see it's all the same it ends here with hashcat 64.bin and hashcat 64.exe i'm running a 64-bit system so i'm gonna choose 64. the thing we do now is we can run the program and and if we want to run the program we just type hash cat in my situation 64 dot exe that's how you run the program but if we press enter right now it won't run the program it will give an error it would tell us that it needs some arguments and it needs the help argument so let's start and as you can see here it says use it hashcat 64 give it an option give it a hash hash file or whatever or try help for more information so we're gonna do that so press arrow up it's the same entry that we used the last time double dash help and this is gonna give us a huge list as you saw this list Let's just watch this list. As you can see, it is a huge help file. It starts with telling us the options. What are the options? We have hash type, we have attack mode, we have version, we have, well, all these things. You see the entire list. The second list that it has is the hashes mode. So Hashcat is not only able to brute force one type of hash, you can enter any type, well not any type, but a lot of type of hashes, as you can see in the screen right now. It can do MD4, MD5, SHH, SH, 
A, I mean, and the SHA256 is the one that has been used for Bitcoin a lot. That's this one. So that's an interesting one. MD5 is, for instance, used on uh, multibit.key files. Maybe interesting to work with. What else do we have? Oh, here we have WPA, WPA2. That's for the Wi Fi passwords. Uh, you can use it on MySQL. You can use it for PHP or whatever. There are a lot of options, as you can see. A lot of different hashes types. Output file formats, debugging mode, attacking mode, that's an important one, attacking mode, the way we're gonna attack the hash. What the hell is going on? Are we recording? Yes, we are. Where were we? 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 Okay, in order for us to be able to use hashcat, we need to have a hashing file. It's a file that's filled with the hashes that we want to brute force. And the way we can do that is by right clicking in the folder, create a new text document. Let's name it hash list, just for the sake of this tutorial. It's not important what the name is as long as it is a text file and not a WordPad file or something because it needs to be completely empty. Let's create our hashing file here. We're gonna use the string. That's what they call it in programming. The string means a sentence of letters. So the string bit would be this hash. So let's copy it, paste it here. And let's add another one. Let's add coin. This is the MD5 hash for coin. Put it over there, press enter. Let's use day day here and let's put trader and line four and let's for the sake of the tutorial try out a longer string this would be six letters let's do bitcoin that will be seven letters and i think that's enough for now these are five hashes bit coin day trader and the word bitcoin we're gonna try and brute force it on the brutest forces of the brute force okay so we have created our hash list.txt let's save it so that it is in the same directory as hashcat and let's run hashcat so you know cmd for command prompt Put it here in the right. First we need to go to the directory of hashcat. That will be cd change directory to c double dot slash. Let's check the directory. Let's go in that hashcat directory. Change directory to hash and just press tab and it auto fills it. Let's check out this directory. So here we have our hash list, the, that list that we just created. Double click it, you see this is the hash list, the, the five hashes that we're trying to brute force. So the only thing we're giving this program is the MD5 hashes, nothing else. Let's first start the program hashcat. We can do that by typing hashcat 64.exe and let's start with the help list. So how does this work? Hashcat wants us to put arguments after hashcat64.exe. The usage would be start hashcat, as you see here, and add options, and then a hashing file. And then we can use a dictionary, but we're not gonna use a dictionary, we're gonna brute force this. So it's gonna be trying every single combination, what is ever possible on this keyboard. And it will try it with obviously first one and then two characters and then three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And it's gonna try everything. We're only using words at the maximum length that was Bitcoin, that was seven characters. So it shouldn't take that long. But remember that every time we add another character, it will take exponentially longer to brute force it. Back to Hashcat. We're gonna start Hashcat and add some options. What are the options? The two most important options to use are the attacking mode and the hash type. It's dash a dash m. We know that we have used MD5, so that will be hashing mode zero, as you see here. So you choose the hashing kind that you know that the hash is. And we're gonna attack it, attacking modes, we're gonna use the brute force mode, number three. Let's scroll to the end. So let's just start it. We say hash cat 64, just like before, dot exe space. Then we say we're gonna use an attacking mode, number three, the brute force your space and then we say it's the hashing mode because that's what the m meant is md5 like i showed you before that's zero the only thing we have to do now is add this hash list here and the way we do that is just type hash list.txt let's just check them out let's press enter and check what the computer is going to do okay what 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 what's going on what's going on well well that was pretty fast okay let's just check out what's what's going on it's it's, it's still working it's still working whoa Okay, it found it all. You see, it's finished. So what happened? Let's check back. Where did I give it the command? Here I gave it the command. Platform 2 device, so it, you see it's working with my GeForce here. 
it is saying hashes five digits so it says i found five hashes in our file the watchdog temperature abort trigger set to 90 degrees well that's good we don't want our temperature to be above 90 degrees centigrade celsius i don't know how you guys say it in english we call it celsius so that's why i say it's celsius here you see this is the first hashing try it tried here in the screen it tried from one letter to one letter so all the one letters and that why that's why it was so quick and there was of course no word with one letter because the smallest word was the word bit and as you can see here it found bit and day so let's grab the head hash list and as you see here this is the original hash that we gave it and it says this one would be bit with the c8 of the end would be day here it says it tried all four characters as you see here four characters two four characters as you see here it found that ending with FFFFD would be coin within five letters it couldn't find anything because we didn't use a five letter word but six letters would be trader as you see here ending with 619 trader 619 you guys know what 619 is that's Rey Mysterio his favorite attack and the last one was the word Bitcoin as you guys saw, we used Hashcat to brute force our MD5 hashes. It was quite fast. It didn't take us long. It, it took us approximately one minute. I can't remember. It was very fast. Wow. I say one minute. I should have said 10 seconds, as you can see here. So it took it 10 seconds to, to crack this. So let's check out for fun another hash, but now a bigger one. So for instance, a eight sign MD5 hash. Let's go back to that website that we used. Let's add an extra letter, Bitcoin. D for fun, Bitcoin D. Oh, I'm stupid. Did you see what I was just doing? I forgot to copy the hash. Bitcoin D. D, D. Okay, so we have two hashes this time, bigger hashes, and let's check if it's able to brute force it quickly. All right, what, what? It's working. As you can see, same screen flashing before our eyes. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six has been done. Let's press S for the status. We are at seven letters and it's gonna take a while. Right, it's at 62%, 80% of all the, the seven letter combinations. Am I right? Yeah, 93%, so 100% on the seven character combinations. And as you see, the temperature of our GPU is slowly rising, 49, 51 degrees, 52. Let's press S again. Whoa, we're only at we're not even at the first percent of the eight character list. I don't know if we're gonna find this Bitcoin D in time. Let's refresh. Wow, we've only had one, well, almost two percent. So you see the exponentially growth in, in time, what I was talking about earlier in the video. And do you see the, the temperature of the fan rising? Temperature of the fan, temperature of the GPU? Well, it was at 59 degrees. And I know that this GPU starts using the fan at 59 slash 60, 60 degrees centigrade Celsius. I don't know. So we're at 4%. So I hope you guys understand that I'm gonna quit this. I'm not gonna wait until it's done. So it is gonna work now, but it's just gonna take us a lot longer. And we don't have time for that. Like I said, we did it. I lost my head. So, I want to thank you all for watching. I hope you did enjoy this brute forcing with Hashcat video. And if you did enjoy this video, just let me know by giving it a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, uh, oh, one more try. And if you're new to my channel, uh, I make these videos every once in a while. It would be very cool if you would subscribe to my channel. Whoa, whoa, whoa. In the meantime, while I'm shooting this outro, we found Bitcoin D, as you saw. Can you see? Can you see? It's here. Took him a while, but we did it. Does that work? Whoa. Okay. So I don't know if you guys saw what just happened. It automatically saves it, as you can see here, in a logging file and in a .pot file. .pot. So if you want to check that out, just start hashcat and use the argument the .pot file, as you can see here. The hashcat.pot file. And it gives you this result here, as you see. I hope I can upload one video every two weeks. Maybe more, maybe less, it depends. 
If you guys know me already, then it's probably gonna be a bunch of videos in a small period of time and then all of a sudden I forget to upload some stuff and then all of a sudden I started doing this stuff again. I hope you guys did enjoy this video and I hope you guys learned something new today and I hope to see you in the next video. So thanks a lot for watching, see you guys next time. Come back. It's happening again.